Hey developers. So today I'm going to show you guys some tips and tricks you can do in the Chrome dev tools so you can be that power user. So make sure you guys watch all the way to the end and you find all about it. Hey, and if you don't know, my name is Eric. I'm a full stack software developer. I'm also the author of a few books. And if you guys are interested in any of that, just check in the link in the description below. I have all the information. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and begin. All right, so you can see here, this is the Chrome Dev Tools open at the bottom. Chrome is open. And I just wanna show you guys a few things that I find quite useful. So first, um, as you know, obviously if you're on any sort of page here, you can just right click and go to inspect. I'm on a Windows PC, but you can do the same thing on on your favorite uh, Mac or Linux box as well. And then you just need to click this little select element. If you select an element here, I think we all are familiar with selecting elements inside Chrome DevTools. But one thing you may not know is you can click on the console here and you can do something called dollar sign zero. And that dollar sign zero will actually be the element that you selected, which is really helpful. So now since I did dollar sign zero, I can have the element. Now I can type in dollar sign zero and change it. So let's say I want to do inner text. I can just change the text to hello world, um, for example. And now you can see on the screen, it shows hello world, which yeah, it's kind of neat that you can go ahead and make any changes like that. Um, you can also always show the last one that you did before. So to do that, uh, you would put dollar sign underscore, and then that'll just bring up the last one that you selected before as well. So that's just a really simple one. So I'm gonna go over, if you right click here and click clear console, that'll clear this. And by the way, you may be familiar if you're using this on your computer, your dev tools might be on the right hand side like this. And I just went ahead and clicked this little triple arrow, uh, triple dots here and then moved it to the bottom just because I think it's just a little easier to see. Okay, so another really cool thing, I'm gonna go ahead and refresh the page here, is you can put on design mode. So if we do document and then type in design mode and then have it equal on, that'll be a special mode that you can pretty much click on any text on your page here and then make updates to it just by typing. So I can type on it, um, you can see what it looks like. Like I went on the next page, it's, it's not the same header. I could type in here. So you could kind of see what happens to text as you get it longer, if it, you'll have ellipsis or what you kind of, what it'll do if you have longer text. Um, certainly you can do anywhere in the page. You can kind of just type and it'll just automatically format for you, which is, you know, kind of, kind of neat, pretty simple concept there, but you know, something I really like. Um, so, you know, if I'm trying to look at different screen sizes, you know, of course you can click the toggle the device toolbar, then I can, um, add it in there and then kind of see what it looks like as the text gets larger and how it formats. So yeah, I think that's kind of a neat little little trick there that you can do. There's so many things in Chrome, by the way, we're just gonna to touch on a few of them, but there there's definitely tons and tons you can do. In fact, you can probably do, um, if I spent all of my time showing you guys all the different things you can do in Chrome, this would be like hours long. There's just so many little neat things you can do, but yeah. But you know, stay all the way to the end and you'll learn them all. And also I'd like for you guys to leave a comment below with some tips that I missed. So stuff that you use, you use in Chrome that I didn't mention because there's a lot of them. Okay, so another thing um, that you may not know is inside Chrome, you can actually, if you click on sources and you click this little arrow hero, you can go to snippets and snippets are a way to just like add random code. So you can click new snippet and then you can just add code in here and you can run this code um, anywhere that you want inside your, when you bring up web pages, you can kind of put your favorite console codes in here if you want to do something. Um, I haven't found a ton of usage. I'm sure there is a, there is a little bit, but let's say I want to do console log uh, high. Um, I can do that. And if I hit control enter, it actually runs it. And you can see here down at the bottom, this console actually shows what I ran. So uh, I could save it, um, I can right click, I can save as, and I don't know, I'll just save it 
just right here in this, this folder. And once after it's saved, you can access it again um, by going back to the sources and new snippet. But another cool thing, there's this uh, this bar right here. If you go Control Shift and I believe it's Command Shift P on Mac, you get this um, this panel bar here there where you can type in different commands. So um, we're going to get into this in a little bit. But if I click back here, I can hit the bang sign or dollar sign, and I can just select the script I just created um, and hit enter and it goes ahead and runs it. So you could see, you can maybe think of, I don't know, maybe you wanted to like make the background yellow. I guess you could maybe use a, put a whole script in here to make different things happen on the web page. Uh, I don't know, you can put alert, hello world, save it and then uh, run it. You see this hello world just popped up, but I'm sure there's more things you can do. Just kind of put little little fun snippets in here of code that you want to run and just hitting the control shift P and then running it, which is kind of neat. All right, so that's snippets. Uh, so let's take a look at a different site here. And one thing I like to do is try to figure out like how a site was written. And, and if you guys have ever done this, if you have ever looked at a single page application site and you've gone to view page source, you look at it looks like this and this doesn't help you at all so it's really hard to figure out so of course you can use our little tool here to select the elements and that sort of helps but it doesn't really show you like how the code was made so sometimes what I do is I go into this network button right here and uh, you can do all requests or XHR requests but for what I'm doing I'm going to do XHR I'm going to clear it and then I'm going to refresh it and what it's going to do is going to download everything from this site and I, what I'm trying to do here is trying to figure out how this is being built. So what I do is I, I sort by size, I look at the top, and first I see that this is a vendor JavaScript. And this could be how after you create a, a single page application site in React or Vue, usually you minify and you obfuscate it and you make it kind of a, a small file and it creates these vendor files or chunk files. So I've looked in here, so this is not it. This is from Fresh Chat. So this is like some plugin, probably this chat. But if I keep going down, I see, um, I see a, let's see here, I see the vendor. Here's a chunk file right here. So this is definitely part of it. So this could be like it's using um, inside React. It might be loading different chunks, um, lazy loading the app, meaning that when you go to different parts of the app, different parts of the app loads for you. There's also this main chunk that I see here. So if I, can, if I go to the response here, it just kind of gives me a whole bunch of code that's kind of hard to use. One thing you can do is you click this little pretty print bracket at the bottom. What it does is it takes it and it makes it prettier so you can actually sort of read it. But you can see right here, definitely not easy to read. It's just <clears throat> a bunch of uh, um, code that has a bunch of variables. It's still pretty hard to read. So what I like to do is to see um, in this this web page in particular, if I do Control Shift P, I can actually hit the back arrow, and I can search for things. So let's look for that main. So here's the main chunk. If I hit, if I press it here to bring it up, you can see here it says Source Map Detected. So this is great. What this means is that we can actually look at the source of the site. And so you're probably thinking, like, why are they including the source code? Well, let's take a look at it here. So if you click here, it tells you first that associated files be added to the file tray. You can debug these resolve files in, in the JavaScript file. Um, so you can look here, static. This told this said it was in static JS. Look at JS here. And cool, so you could see here right in this, this menu here on the left-hand side, all the files for the whole app. And here's the chunk file, which is the minified version that we can't really read. But if you look at index, you can see they're using LogRocket. So this is like a, what a lot of websites do nowadays. If you're using like Sentry, LogRocket, you, if you leave your source maps on, then when you get errors in the website, it determines exactly where they are. Um, you can also upload your source maps, I believe, too. But so what's cool thing is like we now know that they, since they're using LogRocket, they left their source code, uh, source maps on, and now I can look at all of it. So look here, I got components here. I can click on inner. And here's the JSX, completely unminified, completely re readable. And I can just look through all of it and see exactly how they wrote the whole app. 
I mean, you can even start right here at the app.js file and see how it's loading the whole uh, React app, which is really cool. So now I can learn a lot. The whole source map is here. Now, another thing you can do is since we have the source map, it becomes really easy to debug. So here is, if I click on the select element here, and look at it, it says this is a range slider. So once again, I'm gonna hit Control Shift P, and I'm gonna just look for slider. Make sure I hit back arrow to get rid of the, the little um, chevron. So if I look at slider here, I could see right away, oops, let me try that again. Slider, I could see they have a pricing slider.jsx file. So that's, the, that's probably the file. So if I click on it, cool. Uh, actually, right, yep, here it is. Here's the whole file for the slider. Now I can actually throw a debugger, which I actually did earlier, right on this on this switch. So I can hit a debugger right here. That's that blue thing. And now when I go down, cool, it paused in the debugger inside the app. And now I can just, I can uh, hit the step over. Here's all my commands on the right-hand side. I can play, step, step into. I can step over it. Now I can see right here, my toll price is $4.99. I can click the next button. I could see exactly what it's doing. It's setting the price state right here. You can see here, this changed to $4.99 because it took the toll price and divided by 100. So cool. So like it basically did exactly what it was supposed to do. And I hit play here and I could see how, how it worked. So you can definitely do really cool things using this debugger. And since you have the full source code, you can kind of walk the way through it. You can even add watch variables if you wanted. So since we're using source maps, it's it's kind of hard to use watch variables. So what I did as I went back to this main file, and I said, well, maybe I can find, so I'm gonna hit the little prettier button so I can actually see it. And now I'm gonna search for slider. And I can see right here, oh, here's a switch. But, oh, this looks like the switch I want. I can add a, de uh, a debug statement on here. And then I can add to the watch, I can add T. I'll add T to my watch statement. And now when I bring it down, when I hit the breakpoint, cool. See T is still undefined, but if, let's say I hit the step over. Cool, now T is 499. So it actually is watching this statement and I can see what it changes to. I can also mouse my, my mouse over it but that, that's another way to do it. I can't get this working inside the source maps, but I can get it working in the actual source code if I want to do watch statements. So that's just another way of doing it. <clears throat> so yeah, so we went over how to uh, create scripts, snippets, use the dollar sign zero, how to look at source maps, um, how to bring up the uh, this um, panel here. But let's take a look at one more thing we can do, which I think is neat. So this is a website that you just click this button and it shows your location. But do you know you can easily change your location if you want to check to see what it looks like? So if you hit Control Shift P again, and then so this time do Sensor. If you do Show Sensor, you'll see you'll see at the bottom here. You'll see at the bottom. So all I need to do is bring this up. And now I can say my change my location. Now I just set it to Moscow to test it out. But let's say I set it to San Francisco. And I just refresh this page. You can see here, uh, this is in Market Street. So this is San Francisco right here. But let's say I want to change it again. Let's change my location to um, Berlin. I'll refresh the page here. I think I can hit Find Location too. But you can see here now the Balzic Museum, uh, the Borse, Titus Berlin. So now I'm in Berlin. So you could easily go in here and just start changing your location using sensor, which I think is makes things uh, a lot easier. So, I mean, in my everyday job, I use a lot of this debugging with the source maps turned on. It's just so much easier than trying to put a bunch of console log statements everywhere. Sometimes I mess around with like the call stack or watches, but just going in and, and going into something and and adding in a debug statement, it's pretty easy. Like the price slider, um, just adding something in there just to see what it's doing, uh, it, it makes it so much easier. So if you're not doing that, that's what you probably should start looking at. Uh, one other thing, 
If you really wanted to learn all about this website and it has all the source maps, I downloaded this Chrome plugin called Resource Saver. Once you're in this Resource Saver, you just click Save All Resources and it'll download, um, compress all the assets into a zip file, download all the images from the whole domain, all the resources. You can even try to like get XHR requests if you want and it saves it. And you can basically take that whole, especially if they have the, the, the um, source maps on, you can just like download it and just like load it right up into your Visual Studio code and then start like playing around with it and, and compiling it and running it. It will take a little bit of setup, of course. You may have to actually create the webpack and all the configurations and everything, but you could really kind of definitely download it all and start playing around with it. And that's what I've done in the past. All right, well, so that's that's all my tips for Dev Chrome DevTools. I want to hear what your guys' tips are. Leave a comment in the me- comment below. You know, let me know what you guys think of this. Is this a help for you? I really appreciate it. Take care. Peace.